He's alive! In we go! Past the abs. Into the heart cavity. Maybe it's something like the the Ymir world. I see he's made a whole throne room. Could this be the start of a beautiful friendship? The thought just occurred to me that, you know, I was thinking about Sukuna as maybe the potential villain of the show, but now I feel like that's off. I feel like it might turn into something like a Greedling situation, where greed ends up being not so bad, you know? Take the last episode, for example. Sukuna seemed to appreciate Megumi. Didn't kill him, even though he easily could have, which would have been a big line to cross that wasn't crossed. As far as I've seen it, Sukuna's MO seems to be one of power, and power is not mutually exclusive with goodness. It all just depends on how it's used. So that raises the question, if that is the case, what is the villain? Who are the villains? And also from last episode, an interesting touch, if I'm understanding it correctly, was that there's a lot of darkness from within the Jujutsu agency. There's also the dude with the Frankenstein scar. I'm getting the sense that I don't understand who the villains are of the show. It's not going to be just curses. There's got to be a more centralized figure that represents a dark twist of humanity. Human ideology that will be countered by Yuji and his comrades. Episode 6, After Rain. There is something very Attack on Titan-like about this whole thing. The way they talk to each other is like rivals, not enemies. <laughs> not exactly sure what the rules are for fighting in this world. Where are we exactly? I see. It's tough. He's not going to ask for anything small. Yeah, what's his interest in, in him? Interesting. Ooh, that's, that actually goes a long way, but you still can't trust it. He doesn't really have much choice though if he wants to live. Do they have to honor it? Interesting. Alright, that does change things a lot. That doesn't mean there aren't terrible things he can do with that freedom. It's a risk, no matter how you slice it. They mentioned the, the pact thing in the last episode. He tried to fight without a pact. Yeah, that's what makes this a gamble. He doesn't have the full picture. At least he got a hit in. That's a winning wager. Or, or not. If you were going to accept that deal anyway, might as well give it a shot at fighting. Not that it worked out. I feel like this dude is going to be so clutch later. I don't know why I get that feeling. Especially, you know, this upcoming management war that's going to happen, probably. Right. I wonder what their endgame is. Working from within to bring change to a corrupt system. Ooh, soft touch. A little bit of that too. Akatsu who is currently abroad. Yuji was one of them. When you admire your own frontal. <laughs> Ooh, ouch. As if nothing ever happened. <laughs> I get shrugging off death. I mean, that's, you know, you're just glad to be alive. He shrugged up that disappointment comment with surprising vitality. But maybe what he lacks in that department, he makes up for in abs. Why does she have expectations in the first place? Why did her mind go immediately there after he was miraculously resurrected from the dead? That's your first thought in that moment? <laughs> Just long enough. For the tournament. Yeah, this seems like another one of those cases where, you know, the guy is laid back, but I don't know, just from this episode alone, pretty clear his students mean a lot to him. I feel like even that small showing of, of sadness at Yuji's death was pretty big given his natural disposition. They're still here. Exposition and backstory for this waiter. The respect he gets even from the curses. Trapping him rather than killing him. His fondue head is bubbling over with cheese and excitement.
Oh my god. Oh my god. I did not expect that at all. I'm so happy that that waiter I, I just got attached to in five seconds got out to help his sisters. Oh, sorry. This is horrific. This is horrible. Oh my god. Holy crap. It's the Parasite Eve Opera House all over again. He activated their mitochondria. I was not expecting that at all. This villain is so harmless looking. He's comical in appearance. This is the the most horrific scene in the show so far. By far. That's actually a lot. Gojo is even stronger than that. Wow, that was a lot. That came out of nowhere. Imagine how that guy's gonna feel knowing he got out. He doesn't know yet that he's alive. But he took some of that to heart. I mean, on some level, he also wanted to do that. He was just conflicted. What is she after? Yeah, he's rattled. Yuji activated something in him. Let's see what the senpai can do. This should be good. Right, it's all physical talent, no training. I mean, for real. He, he's like the, the greatest fighter alive. Yeah, that episode seems super key as sort of a, a grand humbling, which I feel like is natural to expect from someone who's as talented as he is. Talent is something that everyone wants to have, and you see that coming up in shows a lot where there's this idea that people were just born a certain way. And ultimately, I think it's a really wonderful thing. You know, it's a gift, but it's not without its curses. And one of them is it insulates you from difficulty long enough that you may never learn some of the auxiliary skills that are essential for really high levels of mastery, like humility, being able to realize your limitations, discipline, hard work. For someone as physically talented as Yuji, he likely doesn't know the first thing about training and that actually is fine if your goal is to be sort of at the high level of average you know but as soon as you enter into pro territory where people are taking things really seriously hard work beats talent when talent don't work hard so this is not an area that he can coast and it's going to be painful if he's never really had to hit that point before and had that rude awakening where you know he has limits and people can destroy him so i feel like without that experience the the attitude wouldn't be there and that's where the really good stuff can start happening <laughs> And he took it well. I mean, some people in that situation would, like, run from that truth, you know? They would refuse to admit their own weakness and failings. I'm with Yuji. And exposition! So these are their weapons, I'm guessing? Like the heart hammer and nails? So there's cursed energy and cursed techniques. Maybe it's not the weapons, maybe it's raw energy versus channeled energy. Oh. Why not? That still leaves 20%. We get something to work with. He turned into Parappa the Rapper. Yeah, now you're talking. Yeah, I guess lean into your strengths. Yeah, I mean, he's natural. That much is clear. Natural plus training from the best Jujutsu Sorcerer. You got a winning combination. They could defeat even management. The, the greatest enemy. Huh. So that's it, huh? It's only negative emotions, or at least so far. <laughs> he felt it. Hunter bring them under control. Channeling your negative energy into power and skills. Now this is my kind of training. The terrible French ones are gonna really bring out the anger in you. Did the president make this? Yeah, principal, not president. I see. He's gonna maintain his negative energy throughout the whole thing. Or get punched. Punching would make me pretty pissed off, though. Thanks for spoiling the ending. Yeah. 
それは無理だろうレアだし死ぬとスパイアツわからんなお前あの時 Yeah, there's something interesting going on here where Sukuna is interested in Megumi. He saw something that even he doesn't know yet. I'm really intrigued to see his path. Tsuna, Tsuna. Huh? Nanda yo. Senpai. Nanto ka nari so desu. Just like that, huh? Aka no dosen, ao no dosen. Dochi o kitta rei. Nukashi sunda ta tokoro no gomi no shite bukuro ga. And this is where the heroine dies. So yo, aka yo. Kutsu aka. Kimi o shinjiru yo. He already knows, <laughs> but... <laughs> it's a pretty interesting exercise. There's something meditative about this. Or that concept aside, just simply bringing attention to the unconscious. It's a simple but powerful thing to even realize that there are channels running, you know? And I don't think you can control the things that come up necessarily, but there's something about just even being aware of them that kind of gets you off the railroad track of just following where your emotions are, are thoughts are taking you. Just identifying that you're having a thought or having an emotion can go a pretty long way in, in neutralizing its hold on a person. I could definitely see this training paying a lot of dividends, both practically and thematically. Oh, he knows. Yeah, we were in his ribcage house. Oh, he knows. He knows everything. Oh, but he forgot. That was part of the deal. Right. But he knows. I wonder what he's playing at. I feel like this guy's in danger. And not just from the curses. He's a, he's a threat. He's a threat to everyone. Even his own allies. And he's got to know that, right? Got to have a little healthy paranoia in this line of work. It's fun to head. But I have a feeling this villain is just here for power purposes. To make Oro look extra cool. Cooler than he already looks. Wait, what? That was a big leap. Why would you want to kill a row of college boys who haven't noticed you? What am I missing? It's funny how many unique and novel training concepts are on these shows. We've had basically everything. And now we have what is maybe not the most inspiring, but <laughs> probably one that I would enjoy the most. Training of watching movies. Although I could do without getting punched in the face part. Goro is shaping up to be one of the coolest characters. And I feel like he's only going to get cooler from here. So I'm really excited to see what he can do in the next episode. Because I have a feeling it's going to be a demonstration of his badassery.